My name is Thomas, and I'm a pretty typical teenage guy. I live in a small suburban town where everyone knows everyone, and my life follows a simple routine. Every morning, I wake up to the sound of my alarm blaring at 6.30 a.m. It's a harsh, relentless beep that could probably wake the dead, but it's necessary. I'm not much of a morning person. I roll out of bed, groggily rub my eyes, and shuffle to the bathroom to brush my teeth. The reflection in the mirror shows a lanky teenager with messy brown hair sticking out in all directions. I brush my teeth, splash some cold water on my face, and head back to my room to throw on whatever clean clothes I can find, usually a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. Downstairs, the smell of freshly brewed coffee and sizzling bacon greets me. My mom, Mary, is always up before me, bustling around the kitchen with an energy that seems impossible for such an early hour. She's a whirlwind of colorful scarves, bright lipstick, and jangly bracelets, a quirky and eccentric force of nature who loves fashion more than anyone I know. Good morning, sunshine, she chirps as I slump into a chair at the kitchen table. Morning, mom, I mumble, reaching for a piece of bacon. Mary is a designer by trade, and our house is filled with all sorts of fabrics, sketches, and half-finished projects. She's always working on something new and exciting, which means you never know what you'll find in the living room or what she'll be wearing next. Today, it's a flowy, bohemian dress with more layers than I can count, paired with a set of chunky bangles that clink together every time she moves. As I eat my breakfast, Mary chatters on about her latest project, something involving sequins and silk that I don't quite follow. My mind is still waking up, and I'm only half listening until she says something that catches my attention. I was cleaning out my cupboard yesterday and found the most amazing pair of old high heels, she says, her eyes sparkling with excitement. I completely forgot I had them. That's cool, Mom, I say not really understanding why a pair of old shoes is so exciting. Mary waves her fork at me, a mischievous grin spreading across her face. You know, I bet they'd look great on you, Tommy. I nearly choke on my bacon. What? Oh, come on, don't be such a stick in the mud, she teases. It would be hilarious, just try them on for fun. I laugh nervously, shaking my head. No way, Mom, I'm not wearing your high heels. Mary pouts, but there's a glint of determination in her eyes that makes me uneasy. You never know until you try, she sings, winking at me before turning back to the stove. I finish my breakfast and head off to school, the thought of wearing high heels quickly pushed to the back of my mind. The day goes by in a blur of classes, homework, and hanging out with friends. By the time I get home, I've almost forgotten about the whole thing. Almost. That evening, as I'm lying on the couch playing video games, Mary suddenly appears with a box in her hands. She plops down next to me, setting the box on the coffee table. What's that? I ask, glancing at it warily. Just a little something I found, she says innocently, opening the box to reveal a pair of bright red high heels. They're shiny and ridiculously tall, the kind of shoes you'd see on a runway or at a costume party. Mom, no, I groan, already anticipating where this is going. Oh, come on, Thomas, just try them on. It'll be fun, she pleads, her eyes twinkling with mischief. I shake my head firmly. No way, not happening. Mary crosses her arms, giving me a look that I know all too well. Don't make me beg, Tommy. Besides, what's the harm? It's just for fun. I roll my eyes, but her playful persistence is starting to wear me down. Fine, but only for a minute. I grumble, reaching for the shoes. Mary's face lights up with a triumphant smile. That's the spirit. I slip off my sneakers and reluctantly slide my feet into the high heels. They feel strange and uncomfortable, like I'm balancing on tiny stilts. Mary watches with barely contained glee as I stand up wobbling unsteadily. Okay, now try walking, she says, barely able to keep from laughing. I take a tentative step, nearly toppling over. The heels click loudly on the hardwood floor, and I flail my arms for balance. 
Mary bursts into laughter, and despite myself, I start to laugh too. It's ridiculous and embarrassing, but there's something oddly fun about it. See? You're a natural, she teases, clapping her hands. Yeah, right, I mutter, taking a few more shaky steps. Each one feels like an adventure, and I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of the situation. After a few minutes of this, I finally manage to make it across the room and back without falling over. I kick off the heels and collapse onto the couch, my legs aching. There, happy now? I ask, giving Mary a mock glare. Ecstatic, she says, still grinning from ear to ear. You were amazing, Tommy. Maybe next time we'll try something even more fun. Don't count on it, I say. But there's a part of me that's already wondering what she'll come up with next. Living with my mom is never boring, that's for sure. As I head to bed that night, I can't help but think about the high heels. It was silly and embarrassing, but it was also kind of fun. Maybe there's more to this whole fashion thing than I thought. I brush off the thought as I drift off to sleep, but the next morning, it's back in my mind, nagging at me. The next few days go by without any mention of the high heels, and I start to think that maybe my mom has forgotten about her little experiment. That is, until Saturday morning rolls around. I'm lounging on the couch, scrolling through my phone, when Mary bursts into the living room with a huge grin on her face and a pile of clothes in her arms. Good morning, Tommy. I've got a surprise for you, she chirps, dropping the clothes onto the coffee table. I look at the pile, my stomach sinking as I see dresses, skirts, blouses, and an array of accessories. Mom, what is all this? It's your new wardrobe, she announces, her eyes twinkling with excitement. I thought we'd take the next step and give you a complete transformation. I sit up, staring at her in disbelief. You can't be serious. Oh, I'm very serious, she says, nodding emphatically. Think of it as a fun experiment. We'll see how you look and feel in these outfits, and who knows, you might even enjoy it. I groan, running a hand through my hair. Mom, this is crazy. I'm not wearing a dress. Just humor me, please, she pleads, her expression turning earnest. It's just for fun, I promise. If you hate it, we'll stop. I sigh, knowing there's no way I'm getting out of this. Fine, but just this once. Mary's face lights up with a triumphant smile. Wonderful, let's get started. She grabs the first outfit from the pile, a floral sundress, and hands it to me. Here, put this on. I take the dress reluctantly and head to my room to change. Standing in front of the mirror, I slip out of my jeans and t-shirt and carefully put on the dress. It feels strange and unfamiliar, the fabric soft against my skin. I glance at myself in the mirror and cringe. I look ridiculous. Thomas, are you ready? Mary calls from the living room. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, I mutter, taking a deep breath before stepping out. Mary's eyes widen with delight as she sees me. Oh, Tommy, you look adorable. I cross my arms, feeling incredibly self-conscious. I look stupid. Nonsense, you look fantastic, she insists, pulling me over to the couch and pushing me down into a chair. Now, let's do something about your hair and makeup. Makeup too? Seriously? I groan. Trust me, you'll love it, she says, already rifling through a makeup bag. She starts with a foundation, then moves on to blush, eyeshadow, mascara, and finally, a bright pink lipstick. She's surprisingly skilled, and despite my initial resistance, I can't deny that she's doing a good job. When she's done, she hands me a mirror. I stare at my reflection, barely recognizing the person looking back at me. With the makeup and the dress, I look different. Not necessarily bad, just different. Wow, I say softly, turning my head to see the effect from different angles. Told you, Mary says, smiling. Now, for the finishing touches. She adds a pair of dangly earrings, a necklace, and of course, the red high heels. 
I stand up carefully, wobbling slightly in the heels. This is insane, I mutter. Mary laughs. You look amazing, Tommy. Or should I say, Tina? Tina? I raise an eyebrow. Every great transformation needs a new name, she says matter-of-factly. Now, let's take you for a spin outside. What? No way! I protest, horrified at the idea of stepping outside dressed like this. Oh, come on, just a quick walk around the block, she urges. No one will recognize you, I promise. I hesitate, but the look of excitement and pride on her face makes it hard to say no. Fine, but just a quick walk. Mary claps her hands in delight. Perfect, let's go. We step outside, and the cool breeze on my legs feels strange. I tug at the hem of the dress, trying to make it longer, but it's no use. Mary takes my hand and leads me down the driveway. As we walk, I can't shake the feeling that everyone is staring at me. I keep my head down, avoiding eye contact, but Mary walks confidently beside me, chatting away as if everything is perfectly normal. We pass a few neighbors who give us curious looks, but say nothing. I'm starting to relax slightly when we run into Mrs. Jenkins, our neighbor from across the street. Good morning, Mary. And who is this lovely young lady? She asks, smiling warmly. Mary beams. Good morning, Barbara. This is my niece, Tina, visiting for the weekend. I shoot Mary a panicked look, but she just squeezes my hand reassuringly. Well, it's lovely to meet you, Tina, Mrs. Jenkins says, turning her smile to me. You look absolutely adorable in that dress. Uh, thank you, I mumble, my cheeks burning with embarrassment. As we continue our walk, we encounter a few more neighbors, all of whom seem to buy Mary's story without question. To my surprise, I start receiving compliments on my dress, my hair, even my shoes. It's strange and a bit overwhelming, but there's a small part of me that starts to enjoy the attention. When we finally get back home, I kick off the heels and collapse onto the couch. That was something, I say, still processing the experience. You did great, Tommy. I mean, Tina, Mary says, sitting down next to me. See, it wasn't so bad, was it? I shrug, still feeling a mix of embarrassment and a strange kind of excitement. I guess not. Mary grins. How about we make a deal? You spend the rest of the day as Tina, and if you absolutely hate it, we'll never do it again. I hesitate, but the curiosity that's been growing inside me wins out. Okay, deal. The rest of the day is filled with a whirlwind of new experiences. Mary has me try on different outfits, each one more elaborate than the last. We take pictures, experiment with different hairstyles, and even practice walking in heels. It's exhausting, but also strangely fun. In the afternoon, Mary suggests we go out for ice cream. It'll be fun, Tina. Just one more little outing. I groan, but agree. We drive to the local ice cream parlor, and I feel a mix of anxiety and excitement as we walk in. To my surprise, no one seems to give me a second glance. We order our ice cream and sit outside, enjoying the warm afternoon. As we sit there, a group of kids from my school walks by. I tense up, but they don't seem to recognize me. One of the girls even smiles and says, I love your dress. Thanks, I reply, feeling a strange mix of relief and pride. By the time we get home, I'm exhausted, but also exhilarated. It's been a day full of new experiences, and I'm still processing all of it. That night, as I'm getting ready for bed, I catch a glimpse of myself in the mirror. The makeup is smudged, and my hair is a mess, but there's a new spark in my eyes. Maybe there's more to this whole fashion thing than I thought. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.